This is Dolany TV, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another edition of Edmonton Oilers Franchise Mode here in NHL 21 on the channel. And let me tell you, we came out with a pretty big victory last time out in round one of the 2021 Stanley Cup playoffs against the Dallas Stars, in which you can say one thing for certain compared to the franchise totals so far in the regular season, the goaltending was lights out by Yaroslav Halak, our backup, who's now our starter. And of course, he had way better numbers than Miko Koskinen throughout the season. So it's good to see a guy get the ball and roll with it in the playoffs. Speaking of rolling with it, how about Connor McDavid? 10 points, 5 games, absolutely lit it up and got the job done. You see, no doubt about it. He had 96 points in 82 games, dry settle 82, and of course, point per game, one less. Ryan Nugent Hopkins in there at 81. So now you kind of compare that. You saw what you just saw. You can go back, rewind if you need to. 10 points for McDavid, 8 for Dry Settle, 6 for Chase on Yamamoto with 5. You've got Galchenyuk, who we acquired at the deadline with 4. Barry with 3. You've got Nugent Hopkins with 3. Turris with 3. Clefbaum with 3. And then you got Neal with 2. Haas with 2. Bouchard with 2. And a big goal. Big goal by Tyler Benson in the last game. Derek Broussard as well. And then you've got everybody else in there, Bear and Pugliarvi with a couple of points, and you only have two defensemen. Pointless to this point of the playoffs. I talk of the goaltending. How about this? 4-1-0 and with a shutout and a 9.45 save percentage and a 2.0 goals against average for Yaroslav Halak. Absolutely stellar numbers for a ninth round pick, 271st overall back in 2000. Three at the age of 35, can you sweat, say Dwayne Rollison? That's what we're potentially going to see here going into this series against the St. Louis Blues, who will take a look at what they look like headed into this year. You've got David Perron, Ryan O'Reilly, Phil Adamir, Tarasenko, Robert Thomas, Braden Shen, Jaden Schwartz, Zach Sanford, Tyler Bozak, Alex Steen, Sammy Bly. You've got Sunquist and Clifford. That looks like a pretty regular standard roster. And you've got Braco, Krug, Scandella, Falk, Gunnarsson, Bertuzzo. Yeah, there is not much to this Blues team that changed over year over year. And of course, you got Finnington and John Gillies. So this team really didn't go out there and do anything incredible to change it up. But the task in this series, ladies and gentlemen, is a simple one. Crack Bennington early, just like we cracked Bishop. Crack him often. Get that back up in there, right? John Gillies, only a 78 overall. Pretty simple formula. Let Connor McDavid feast, score a bunch of goals, and away we go. Problem is, the defense will have to be on their best toes to keep the Blues out of the net. They are a 45-win club, and they did take out a team before, I believe, in the Colorado Avalanche. So let's get to it. Shall we? Let's not waste too much time. We went over time last time, so we'll get to this St. Louis Blues series as quickly as we can. They took them in six games. We took the Stars in four. Of course, the Stars had the best offense entering things, so we'll see what we can do against the St. Louis Blues here. We'll go eight times speed. Goals are on, and it's Sammy Bly getting a goal on Yarrow Halak to start the series off nice and early, only a minute and 26 seconds or a minute and 16 seconds, rather, into the period. Now it's Kyle Clifford, and that fourth line has struck a couple times. But how about that on the power play? Alex Chieson gets it going for us, and all of a sudden it's a 2-1 game. And how about 2-2? There's his first point of the playoffs. Caleb Jones gets the job done. A minute 27 left in the period. It's a 2-2 game, and it's anyone's game now to see how this turns out. Let's get to the second period. Yara Halak, two goals on 12 shots. There's a goal. Oh, it's Vladimir Tarasenko, but oh, answered back by Ryan Nugent Hopkins, and then Alex Chieson. You know what? He is already out of hat trick this playoffs, and now he's got his second once again. And whose goal was scored all the way out there as David Perron answers to tie this one up. And that's tough. So 4-4. But somebody scored from way out deep. And how about Tarasenko with another one? 5-4. The score after two periods of hockey. And you look at that. Alex Chieson's goal was from behind the red line. Oh my goodness. 
And then Nuge was scoring from that sharp angle. Oh, man. Jordan Bennington having a rough night in net. Yarrow Halak still in net after five goals on 21 shots. Let's turn up the ante and go for a big period here. The Oilers need a power play goal. They can't get it from Alex Chase on to complete the hat trick. How about Kyle Turris scoring off the half wall? We'll take that 5-5. This is the most goal scoring we've seen all playoffs long. 5-5 five, five, deep into the third period. Gaetan Oss. Oh, yes, sirree. From the goal line, Ryan O'Reilly answers back with the goalie out seconds later. And in a 6-6 six, six game with both starters still in, we are headed to overtime. Tied 33 shots apiece. 6-6 six, six, and let's get OT underway. It's going to be all of a sudden done and dusted. Whoever scores next wins the hockey game game one of the second round series oh my goodness this one turned into a classic quickly and we're going to go all the way through this period potentially without having a goal scored and that is our first scoreless period until leon dry settle leon dry settle gets the job done and we win seven six on 50 shots we put up 17 shots in 17 minutes in overtime and oh worked the St. Louis Blues and you got to imagine Jordan Bennington can't get the start next game but let's go all periods and this is an absolute mess look at that spray chart dry settle O'Reilly Haas Turris Tarasenko Perron Chase on Nugent Hopkins Tarasenko Jones Chase on Clifford Bly oh my goodness oh my goodness that is a mess beyond a mess but the Oilers pull out a 7-6 80s hockey thriller in overtime to win game one against the St. Louis Blues. And what an eventful game that is. Three stars of this one. Tarasenko, two goals and an assist. Kyle Turris, a goal and two assists. And then you've got Ryan O'Reilly, a goal and an assist. Yeah, the goalies, they aren't getting credit where credit is due for this one. That was a rough performance all the way around. Vegas takes game one against the Flames. And now we got to see what goes on in game number two. I mean, you know what? We have won five out of six games. There's no reason to adjust. The lineup will keep rolling. And we'll see what this Edmonton Oilers team can do here against the St. Louis Blues in game number two. We started off hot last game. We're not going to do that in game number two. The Oilers, though, nine shots against the Blues. Four so far. Now we're up to 11. But it's Marco Scandella. Who scores the goal? And the Blues have had some odd goal scorers so far this uh, series. But you know what? They've also gotten help from the big guns. And the Blues, they even up the shots 12-10. And we trail. one nothing after the first period of hockey. you got to get in there. you got to get the job done. you got to go score some goals if you're Connor McDavid. And how about Nugent Hopkins having a resurgence this, this uh, series? But it's Ryan O'Reilly who answers back 2-1. We had hope for a second, but it was three minutes later. O'Reilly answers back, cuts a lead back for the Blues way. And now it's Alexander Steen getting it going in the Blues. They're scoring a couple more goals than, say, those. Uh, oh, Robert Bertuzzo as well scores a goal. And all of a sudden, it's 4-1. After the second period, things look bleak, but you know what? I have faith. Bertuzzo, Steen, O'Reilly. Nuge got us going from his patent spot. It wasn't a power play goal, but you need to chop goals here quick and as efficiently as possible. We have 31 shots, only one goal to show for it. Jordan Binnington coming up huge for his team in the playoffs, but shorthanded goal. Caleb Jones, oh, his second point of the playoffs, his second of the series cuts it to 4-2. But it doesn't look like we're going to get the job done here. 14 seconds bleed off the clock. And we lose this one 4-2 after taking a thriller. And suddenly goaltending a little bit questionable here. Jordan Bennington 2.0 goals against average in that one. Scandella and Steen the other stars. And all of a sudden I don't like what I'm seeing. A 4-2 loss. But we did just score 7 goals. So we're only down a single goal in this series. A shorthander from... Caleb Jones gets the job done. I'm going to see if we can edit the lines here and potentially go roll out. Uh, Kyle, I, I think you got to roll. You got to roll. Miko Koskinen next game. And let's see what does that do for us. What does that do for us. Let's get 
Gaetan Oss up there, see if he can't get going. And Derek Broussard, who's only had a goal down there. Kyle Turris, goal and an assist. You know what? Heck yeah, let's do that. See what that does. Kyle Turris has been playing well. A goal, five assists so far. We're going to take a look at the special teams, which have been a little suspect so far. And we'll see if we can switch Tyson Berry and Oscar Clefbaum. And you look at that second power play unit. They are dandy out there. But let's get Chase on, who's been a trigger man all series for us up there and penalty kill hasn't really killed us so far they've been doing their job so as the cat just decides he's going to come on through no worries there sorry for the shakes as we'll carry on the lines looking good as far as things can be concerned so far yes i forgot to change miko koskinen over so let's see if we can't get miko into the net see if we can give him a chance we've rode halak so far but it's time to see what Miko Koskinen can bring to us because we need him to give us something a little bit more than we're getting out of Yarrow Halak so far this series. Ten goals in two games isn't going to get the job done. That said, I want to assign the scout just quickly, make sure we've got our scouts doing their jobs. Yes, we do, so everything's looking good. Quickly, the draft rankings. This may be a bad omen or this may be a good omen for us to see how the draft is shaping up and see if we found any other gems hanging out there somewhere around. As you see, a couple of high elites in this draft, but those are going to fall down pretty quickly as one of them is a bust. And inside the top three, we've got those guys. Nothing really too firm, set in stone. Lots of medium elite guys that we've potentially scouted a low elite in Lickens. But the draft, it's a large unknown, couple high top six forwards, couple medium top six forwards. Stringer, I know after a couple of Sims, is a top six forward. Somebody will have to definitely look at picking up. You see there's not too much quality for us to go find in this draft so far. Our scouts will answer a couple of questions, but they won't answer the full picture quite yet. So let's get to it. Let's go win a Stanley Cup instead. Game three against the St. Louis Blues. 5-2, 5-3, the records after several games in the playoffs each. And it's a question, who wants it more tonight? It's a 1-1 series. Alex Chase on coming up clutch would be huge for us. Connor McDavid scoring a hat-trick would be clutch. Or go out there and see a second goal in the series from Tyler Benson. However, Miko Koskinen so far standing on his head. 14 shots against, not a goal in the playoffs allowed. 17 shots after the first period, now 19 officially. And Miko Koskinen doing exactly what we asked him to do. Step in there and stop pucks. You like to see it. Let's get into the second period. The Oilers need to start putting on shots, but the Blues really putting the boots to us here. No power play scoring from there. Chase on can't capitalize. 27 shots now from the Blues, and this is looking like a heck of an effort, but I told you, this guy's having a series. Ryan Nugent Hopkins, three goals, three games. Sunquist, it's bound to happen on 29 shots. Ties the game for the Blues, and we head to a final, hopefully deciding third period that scores us a 2-1 series lead. Man, Miko Koskinen's look sharp. One goal, 29 shots. Can't complain about that. You know what? If he even lets in a second one, it's not that bad at the end of the day. How about Tyler Benson? I called it, baby. I called it. This isn't a post-commentary. He gets the job done. Tyler Benson goes and scores a goal. The power play goes 0-4 once again. But that is huge. Nuge and Benson on that second line. And how about Miko Koskinen making 4 40 saves and scoring us a heck of a victory there. 2-1 over the St. Louis Blues. That's a huge effort. One goal against a 975 save percentage. That's how you step into the playoffs. Jordan Binnington gets the second star. And Tyler Benson takes home third star. Wow. Absolutely unreal. So now let's take a look into what could be a big time game number four here on the ledger. We're 15 minutes deep into the episode now. We got to make up some hay. And how about Ryan O'Reilly? Hey, that's not very nice. Scoring on Koskinen. And then Steen scoring and five shots. But Derek Broussard answers back. And suddenly it's okay by a little bit better as it's a 2 1 score for the St. Louis Blues. We need a big time effort here in this period. We need to score a goal late. And oh, Ryan O'Reilly on 
the end of the power play scores a 3-1 goal. The Blues, though, they have 17 shots. We're getting heavily outshot once again. We got to drive possession and get the job done here. The old fancy stats not looking too nice for us. 3-1 St. Louis leads. Miko Koskinen a little leaky. We should have went back to Yarrow Halak potentially. Zach Sanford power play goal. Robert Thomas another goal. And suddenly uh, Miko Koskinen not standing up like he should have in this game. We gave him a second chance and he can't get the job done. 5-1 headed in to the third period of hockey. Let's just take our lick and get this over with. Power play goal here would be huge. They're not going to get it done. 15 minutes left. Sammy Bly on the power play again. 6-1 for the St. Louis Blues. This one's deflating. 29 shots for the others. Oscar Clefbaum wakes up, scores a goal in this series. Jordan Bennington cracked for a second time, but it's not going to work as it's too little, too late, and the St. Louis Blues beat up on our goaltending once again, 6-2. And I got to question the defense here. We got Evan Bouchard in the lineup, I believe, still. We got to take a look at what's going on here, who's really struggling for us in the plus-minus category. That was an ugly loss. Connor McDavid... All of a sudden, his offense has seemed to dry up. I don't know why I go here to the regular season stats. I've done that, time eternal. But let's go to player stats here and see what we got going on. 13 points, dry settle 9, chase on 8, Yamamoto 8, Nuge 7. He's been good. Turris 7, Galchenyuk 5, Neil 5, Barry 4, Haas 4. You've got Cloughbaum with 4, Jones with 3, Benson with 2, Broussard with 2. Nurse Bear with two, Pugliarvi with two, Bouchard with two. So it's tough. Bouchard's a plus three. Anyone who's the worst plus minus players on our team here, that would tell us Galchenyuk, Neil, Haas, Benson, Pugliarvi. So I'd say Haas, Neil, and Galchenyuk are out there costing us goals in this series. So we got to figure out a way to change that up and get something different on that third line because that's our third line really costing us, but it's not. It is more so our, uh, hmm, interesting, interesting, interesting. There we go. We'll change it up. We'll get Derek Broussard, who scored a goal for us recently, and see if we can shift things around, get Haas, Broussard, Neil up there. I really don't want to do that. How about we keep Galchenyuk in a starring role? Actually, Galchenyuk's listed as a center left wing, so let's see if we can't do something there. That's going to give us a minus one, so we're not going to do that, but I think we could possibly go here. Nope, that's not going to work either. That will work. We'll see what that does. You know what? We'll play with that a little bit. Defensively, Clefbaum, Nurse, you know what? Let's get Bear up there with Nurse, see if we can't get a better defender. Jones and Bouchard will fit for now. And yeah, there's without a doubt, we got to go back to Jarl Koskinen, he still looks good, right? 350 save percentage, 909 save, or 909 save percentage, that's not bad. Jarl Halak, his number's way better, though. His number's way better. We got a better chance with him in net. The lineup changes. We got to get Connor McDavid going. It's been a while since we saw his name on a goal, so we got to see if he's scored. Has he even scored at all this series? I don't think he has. So how about we go into the final three games. It's a 2-2 series. The St. Louis Blues, the Edmonton Oilers in the second round of the Stanley Cup playoffs 2021. Now all of a sudden, yeah, you know what? There you go. That's what we wanted to see. We wanted to see that hold there by Mr. Yaro Halak. It's been a good period so far. Shots are lower, but Gaetan oh, scoring a big one. There you go. I like to see that. That's a huge goal again out of our depth scores, at least our depths here because Connor McDavid's not and he's taken a series off, but we're still 2-2 and into the second period we lead 1-0. The St. Louis Blues, less shots than us. You like to see what we're doing here, 14 shots. Halfway through the game, 15 shots on net and suddenly we're doing just okay to kind of tread in water here in this game, both sides. As Jordan Bennington yet to be chased in the game. Power play still going to come up 0-4. And that's not uh, of any use to us. We'd like to see it. But dry settle, okay. Okay, Leon Dreisel gets us going. James Neal gets us going. There we go. Again, depth scoring, getting the job done. That's why you're paying James Neal $5.75 million. 3 nothing, 4 nothing. Connor McDavid. Finally. Finally. And you got to think Jordan Bennington's out of the game. We'll check the post box afterwards but it doesn't matter as Jaden Schwartz scores a late goal 59 seconds to go 
and the Edmonton Oilers take game number five, a convincing 4-1 victory. Yarrow Halak, 26 saves, and you like to see that as well out of everybody. Look at this, Connor McDavid, Leon Dry, Settle points, Tourist point, Broussard point, Neil Bear points. You've got Haas with a point, and then you've got Oscar Clefbaum with a point as well. And the only ones wearing the minus collar are this one, Benson, Chason, and Nuge. Everybody else doing just fine. Shots on goal. Things are looking good there as, you know what, quite a few guys had shots on goal. Neil, five. McDavid, four. Yeah, you know what, you like to see that. Shooting percentage there. And face-off percentages. Yeah, Haas did all right. You've got a couple wins on McDavid, Nugent Hopkins. You've got Galchenyuk, who went 41.7%. That's not going to do it. That's tough. But we want to check those St. Louis stats because I want to see if the goalie's got time. And you see John Gillies didn't get time, but apparently Jordan Bennington only played 40 minutes. That doesn't quite add up. But we'll check the three stars. Bang. Yaro Halak, 150 goals against average, but 26 saves. So something doesn't add up. The goalies are a little messed up, but we'll let NHL 21 away with that one because we have a chance in game number six against the St. Louis Blues, a back-and-forth series all the way through to take home a second-round series victory here. We'll speed it up, and let's get to it. The Oilers got to get busy early like we were last game. Go score about six or seven goals. Power play for the Blues. Yarrow Halak back in net. It's not going to happen. 13 shots. The Blues finally crack through Oscar Sundquist. But Alex Galchenyuk, who's been wearing the minuses this series, gets it going. Derek Broussard, the depth is unreal this series. Doing an excellent job winning us hockey games. Robert Thomas, though, he scores to even it up 2-2. Jordan Bennington having a rough series. Dry settle. Once again, scores a goal. What's that? Three for him this series. Nuge, that's four for him this series. 4-2. And it's all of a sudden quite a hockey game early and often here in this second period. How about Derek Broussard, his second of the game? What a pickup he's turned into off of the uh, old free agency market towards the trade deadline. And yes, sirree, 5-2. Look at where he scored that goal, too. 28, 28, the shots, an epic collapse is the only thing that prevents the Oilers from moving on to game number one of the third round. Tori Krug, he's trying to get it done. How about that? A 5-3 goal there. The Oilers now in precarious waters, eight minutes to go. Tyler Benson, he puts it to bed. He put the last series to bed. He's going to put this one to bed, 6-3. And you know, when you need to put a series to bed, you just call... Tyler Benson, 6-3. The Oilers take it. Bush, or Broussard, sorry, two goals. Benson, a goal and an assist. And how about Ryan Nugent Hopkins? A goal and an assist as well. And what development here. Tyler Benson turning into a playoff hero all of a sudden. Now, you know what? It's the Vegas Golden Knights. It ain't going to be the Battle of Alberta in game or in round three. So it's us against the Golden Knights. And my, how the mighty look as we'll simulate up to the date, and there you go. The Vegas Golden Knights, an 8-3 and three record as well. Our opponent in round number three. We'll take a look at who's all scored goals for us. Yarrow Halak, he's been a beast. You know what, that one rough game, and I doubted him. I got somebody in there. Obviously, the win was still rough too. But you look at that, 15 points for McDavid, 12 for Drysaddle, 10 for Chase, on 9 for Nuge now, 9 for Kyle Turris, 9 for Yamamoto. You've got Galchenyuk with 6, you've got Neal with 6, Barry with 6, Clefbaum with 6, Broussard with 5, Haas with 5. You've got Benson with 4, Jones with 4, Bear with 4, 3 for Nurse, 3 for Pooley-Arvey, who really needs a playoff goal, and Bouchard as well has 2 points. What a go this has been. Goalies wise, you've got Halak 7 2 and 1, a shutout under his belt, 925 save percentage, and a 269 goals against average. Koskinen, much improved over the regular season, but he has, you know what, gone in there and gotten us a win this year. So that's huge. Now let's go check out those Vegas Golden Knights, see what they're looking like. Yeah, Marc Andre Fleury, dang, is he looking good. 915 save percentage, 291 goals against average, 7 and 3, while you've got Robin Lehner 
who's got a 100, 100 average, 1,000 average, 1 1.0. He's got a shutout or not, I guess. I don't know. He came in and saved 10 shots and got the job done. Okay, so he's, he's looked good too. He only played 19 minutes of a game but got the job done and saved probably a big victory for the Golden Knights. Okay, sure enough. Jonathan Marshall, 13 points. You've got Pacioretty, Stone in there. Everybody else kind of getting in there with points as well. This is a much kind of different by committee group. Kind of how the others are looking. Dahlstrom, you've got Theodore there with one as well. Reeves with one. And Stevenson, Carrier, and Nosek. Oh, yeah, all right. It's looking good for those Vegas Golden Knights, that's for sure. So now the question is, what does their lines look like and how do we match up against them it's going to be an interesting third round series, but we'll get to that next time. Oh, you look at this. You've got Raquel. Oh, that's the Anaheim Ducks. That's the Anaheim Ducks. We want the Golden Knights, and that's how they're stacking up. They don't really have a lot of beautiful overalls like we do. I mean, they've got an 88, they've got an 85, an 86, 86. Yeah, they got a little bit on us defensively. Yeah, they got a little bit more on us, that's for sure. Petra Angelo with almost not point per game yeah things are looking good there so we'll find out what happens next but that's another big series victory in the bag ladies and gentlemen i'm tyson this stolen tv two rounds away from the cup count them two rounds away from the cup i will catch you guys in the next one